I have written a program that solves number puzzles in the game Cross Set and Cross Set Infinity. How I did it and also what's a depth first search in this video. Let's go! Cross Set is a puzzle game I found on Steam. You can consider it a sort of a distant variation of Sudoku, except your non-repeating numbers are just in the columns and rows and you have only preset numbers in cells to choose from. This is how it works. You have a square field of cells where each cell has from one to a few numbers on it. You can rotate between those numbers as you are trying to make every row and every column to contain only unique numbers. There are a few levels with puzzles in each of the games. Some of them may contain fixed numbers in a clever pattern, making solving a puzzle a fun experience, and some are just huge spreadsheets of numbers, and it could be quite a challenging experience to go through lines and rows, looking for the numbers you need over and over again, kind of like in Sudoku. And once you get everything unique on all columns and rows, the puzzle is solved. And it is quite satisfying, also much like Sudoku. So Cross Set contains 73 levels, Cross Set Infinity has further 177 levels, plus a level generator, so you would never run out of sets to cross, so to say. Personally, I did enjoy perhaps half of the first game, upon completing which I thought that puzzles became a bit too difficult for my frail brain, yet the temptation to finish the game by unleashing the power of Python on it grew, so unleash I did. Let's check out how the solver works. First, reading the screenshot, it wasn't too straightforward. Get samples of all numbers you would encounter and compare whatever you see on the screen to that sample. 50 samples will cover all possible issues. So, recognition is done, we have a puzzle in the form of nice three-dimensional array of numbers. Two dimensions for width and height and third for the string of numbers you have in every cell. Now, to the solution. Basic logic is quite simple, you'd grasp it after playing through a couple of levels. Here it is. First, if there's only one number in a cell, you can go ahead and delete this number from all cells in this row and column. Second, if in the whole row or column there's only one instance of a certain number, this number is the one that should be left in that cell. And this is it. Apply these two rules to all the cells and all the rows repeatedly and sooner or later you will be left with the array where you have exactly one number per cell the solution. Even seemingly tricky levels like, say, this one, 8-1, or this one, 10-F, which are the sort of mid-boss fights of both games, they can be solved just repeatedly applying those two rules to them. This is, for example, what it is going to look like for 10-F level. With each iteration we apply those two rules to every row and every column in the game, and every time it gets a little thinner, and after just four iterations, puff! It is solved. And the same goes well for 90% of levels you encounter in both games. As for the remaining 10%, this is where things are starting to get interesting, as they cannot be solved this way. So what are those 10%? And we're talking about 9 levels in Cross Set and 17 levels in Cross Set Infinity. In these levels you can get to the solution just by using these strategies. You can shed off a few numbers, but the remaining metrics will not be one number in each cell. And for some of the harder ones, you won't be able to take away any number at all using those strategies. Like this one, plus plus 15 from Infinity Game. Let's look at the example. This is the earliest level like this you encounter in the game. Bonus level plus 4 in cross set. After running a few cycles of our basic logic, it has definitely thinned, but it is still not solved. What can we do? Well, if you are an avid Sudoku solver, full disclosure, I am not, you'd pencil in a number tentatively and then you would check if the puzzle still can be solved with this penciled in number, right? And this is almost exactly what we are going to do. Essentially, I randomly remove a number in one of the cells and check if the puzzle can be solved after that. And what we hope will happen is you either find yourself with an incoherent set of numbers which means you have guessed incorrectly, or you would find a solution. Crisis averted, or is it? As in more complex cases, after you guessed and removed a random number, you will arrive at neither of those outcomes, 
but rather at yet another stuck game state. What does it mean? Shall we continue guessing further, as maybe one guess is not enough in this case, or shall we go back, as maybe our initial guess was wrong in the first place? And the thing is, we don't know, it, it could be either. So to make sure we get the solution eventually, we need to devise a strategy that will guess repeatedly and go deep enough into guessing, but then backtrack often enough to make sure it's not stuck in a wrong guess. This is what it looks like. Your guessing strategy looks like a tree or a graph, with branches being guesses that will in turn break further into smaller branches of further guesses that will in turn break again and again and again. The solution is at the farthest end of one of those branches. What we are performing is a version of what is called a depth first search, meaning we go all the way deep down, check all the available options down there, then if there's nothing there, track back a little bit, then dive deep again and so on and so forth until all branches are checked and the solution is found. This is called a depth first search in a contrast to a breadth first search. There we would calculate all the possible moves for the first step, then for the second step, then all possible third steps and so on. Now, back to our depth first search, as there are dozens and sometimes hundreds of numbers on the board, we cannot just go through all of them. We have to limit our search somehow, otherwise it will get out of hand very quickly. We need to have a set of rules when the program has to backtrack and not get fixated on a potentially erroneous guess. Here's the list of parameters I came up with and also possible issues if we set the parameters too high or too low. First, we can set a limit to a depth we want to go to. This represents a number of sort of consequent guesses we are ready to make in order to reach the solution. If the limit is too big, you might waste a lot of time being too deep guessing some lost cause. If the limit is too small, you are risking not having enough depth in case the puzzle indeed requires a certain minimum number of guesses to be made. Another parameter is the branching factor. So how many different guesses we would want to make from each point from each game state. And again, if the number is too small and you're making too few guesses, you may be leaving too small a room for error on your way to a solution. If the branching factor is too big, you may get stuck, especially in deeper layers where the workload grows exponentially with bigger branching factor. Also, I thought it would be helpful to have different logic for branching on the zero depth when you only start guessing. It's like how many times you're going to say Okay, this first guess seemed to not have worked, so let's go back to square one and try again. So what are the correct numbers to choose for these limits? It's a trial and error thing, so we must pick the hardest level in the game and find a setup that will always get the solution. And the hardest level in the game, the spider mastermind boss fight, is the last level of the bonus content of the cross set infinity. Level plus plus 16. Here it is. And finally, the solver was done, so I could just start the game, open a puzzle, press a button, and the program will do the rest. So let's watch it in action on the most interesting levels of both games. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, subscribe, and see you in other videos. Bye!